There are good programming languages, and there are bad programming languages. And then there are esoteric programming languages. In this video, we'll discuss what an esoteric programming language is, with some examples. An esoteric programming language is a language created with the sole purpose of showing off the power of programming and pushing language design to its limit. The goal of these languages is to reach Turing completeness, the ability to implement any algorithm. These languages are of course not intended for practical use, and I would not recommend using any of these languages for serious projects, unless you want to be a chef or a poet. Okay, essentially they're made as a joke. Let's begin by trying the classic language brain fuck. You've probably heard of brain fuck. It only consists of these characters, but is still a Turing complete language. The concepts in this language are pretty easy to pick up, however writing anything in the language is another story. This is due to the highly limited functionality the language provides. And don't even get me started on reading brainfuck code, it takes a superhuman to even attempt that. In brainfuck, you begin with a 30,000 long character data pointer that is split into singular characters. You can move forwards and backwards through each data block and can either increment or decrement their values. The character set can then be printed to the console using the dot command. See how easy it is? We're now going to move on as my brain is already melting. If you like cooking, you'll love this one. Chef is a programming language that requires a programmer to code in the style of a cooking recipe. One of the design principles specify recipes should not only generate valid output, but be easy to prepare and delicious. In order to write a Chef program, you specify the program's name and description. You can declare variables using the ingredients section, and write the program in the methods section. Here you have access to an unlimited number of mixing bowls and baking dishes, which can contain ingredient values. In a mixing bowl you can add values, enter values, remove values, and much more. Now for my favourite, Shakespeare. Shakespeare is designed to resemble, well, Shakespeare plays. You must first begin with a title, followed by a list of play characters and their descriptions. Each play character represents a variable, and must be named after a real Shakespearean character. Each of these variables can hold the value of a signed integer. The characters that will speak are required to be entered onto the stage. From here things get strange to say the least. Every positive noun is represented as one and every negative is represented as minus one. For example, TypeScript would have the value one because it makes JavaScript development blissful, and C++ would have the value minus one because it makes people using it want to kill themselves. Confused yet? Good. For every adjective provided before the noun, the noun's value is then multiplied by two. This means the phrase blissful TypeScript would have the value two, and painful confusing C++ would have the value minus four. Programmers can then use pronouns or reflective pronouns to assign values to variables and print them using either open your heart or speak your mind. So yeah, you can make some pretty funny programs using these languages. If you enjoy watching the information I've stolen from the internet, be sure to like and subscribe.